Hey, Steven Young here doing a, a version of the Junkyard Crawl. Let's call this uh, Greatest Hits from the Great Texas Mopar Ford Auction event, which happened on October 13, 2021. So it's happened, it's over, it's history. These cars are no longer for sale. But in this video, we're going to recap five really cool Chrysler 300 letter cars, including this 1958 300D, which sold for two or $28,750. Sounds like a lot of money. Well, it's a great car. It's really solid. But beyond on that, a 300J and a bunch of other cool Chrysler letter cars sold in the auction. This is a highlight of five of those cars, as found mostly in the junkyard at the John Haney Collection out there in Texas, where they sat outdoors for years. So this is Junkyard Crawl with a little bit of a spin, the Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction event. Now, Spanky Asseter, former lead auctioneer at Parrish Action, runs a thing called the Great or, uh, Freedom Car Auctions, and he's still very much in business, and he sells collections like this. So again, uh, John Haney passed away, leaving 280 great old Mopars outdoors in a Texas prairie and we help to sell them and this is a video encompassing five of the letter series Chrysler 300s and again these cars are no longer for sale they're long gone but again uh, enjoy this a lot of great cars on display roll the tape Steve Mignani here for Asseter Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Event with item number 137, 1962 Chrysler 300. Now the big question is, is this a 300H letter car or not? If it is, it's one of 558 or so that were built. Now we have to add up the clues. It's missing its engine, but of course these all came with a big block. The 413 dual quad engine would have sat right here if it's a 300H. If it was a regular 300 Sport would have been a 361. Now I don't see a trim tag and I can't get the driver's side door open to verify that it is indeed an H. But we go to, uh, let's run down the driver's side of the car. If nothing else, it's a pretty solid example. I don't see a whole lot of uh, rust through here. The doors have, uh, they look to be pretty straight down here. There's no sign of any plastic filler on the doors. The rear quarter panels down low have got, uh, doesn't look like any Fixing's been done here ever. The wheel lip is very nice. The magnet sticks, and even down low, the quarter panel extensions in the back, the quarter panel sticks. So a little bit of bubbling starting to happen there, but again, still solid and no sign of plastic filler. The 300 emblem is faded. I can't see if there's an H there or not. We go, oh, oh, never mind. Here we go. I just noticed this right here. Come to the trunk. Okay, 300. H. This is one of 558 300Hs built in 1962, and inside the trunk, okay, there is uh, some dust and some dirt, but yep, 300H, this is the real deal. Now here's the surprise. Uh huh. Okay, somewhere along the line, this car was hit hard. <laughs> so what we have here is a Chrysler 300H accident victim. Um, it's a rare enough car to where it deserves a restoration. Um, the damage, of course, is very sad. I dare say you could almost buy this car, put it on a pedestal in your collection, and leave it right like it is as a time capsule. Okay, inside, the wonderful thing is the 300H had a specific bucket seat interior with leather, center console, automatic car. I did check the speedometer, the Astra Dome, still there with a 150 mile per hour maximum. So indeed, this is a 300H, one of 558 built in 1962. Very rare car, heavy duty suspension on this one. And, you know, even with that damage right there, I dare say this is a very rare once-in-a-lifetime discovery. You just don't find them like this anymore. Bit of Steve Mignoni here for the Asseter Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Horde sale with something very special. This is one of 809 1958 Chrysler 300 Ds ever built. It's a beautiful project car. This car is basically semi-disassembled. The parts go with it that aren't seen here. But what we see here is a very clean, rust-free body. And my magnet tells me that, uh, again, this is very, very clear. Uh, I do see a little bit of plastic filler here, but again, the magnet still sticks to it. So, a little bit, little bit, maybe a dent right there, who knows. But we do see the heavy-duty brakes up front, and under the headlights, 58 Crusher 300s have got this. This a little red vent. That's actually a brake cooling duct, and yes, the plastic parts are still here inside under the front headlights, right up in there. 
So very complete car. That puppy right there, that is the cold air for the brakes. Inside, while some of these had manual transmissions, like a couple of them, this one has the push button torque flight. Go on inside of there and take a peek. And there are the buttons to the left. Bench seat, power windows, very nice presentation inside. It's almost ready to go. You know, I mean, uh, it's a project car for sure. But again, the quarter panels on this one, no rust. The beauty of this, you know, we all know that those 50s Chrysler products were notorious for rusting badly, but this is a Texas example. And again, 809 of these were built. So let's go under the hood and see what we have there. Yep, there it is. This is the mighty 392 Hemi in its second year in the 300s. Dual quads, of course, standard issue on the 300s. And I love this. These are adjustable rocker arms right here, seen only on high-performance Hemis to allow lash adjustments for the solid cam. These are a couple thousand bucks if you're trying to build a Hemi and you need them, but they, here they are, complete and intact. Air conditioning, factory AC car, pretty rare option. Let's go down this side and look inside the trunk and see what we find. Again, the paint's been partially removed, but again, that is a rust-free, solid body. My magnet sticks pretty much everywhere. And these things, again, were notorious for rusting in New England. So, inside the trunk, what do we have here? Okay, looks good. Oh, 300, here's the emblem from the side of the car, the 300D. And the hubcaps are here. And here's one of those Hemi valve covers. We look at this here, and something special about this is to clear the adjustable rocker arms on the solid lifter Hemi, these bumps are seen only on letter car valve covers and on industrial Hemis. So this car is very, very complete. It's a perfect project car, ready to go. And again, one of 809 made. Not a fake, not a clone, it's the real deal. Hey, Steve Mignon here for Asseter Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Event. And this is a 1963 Chrysler 300J. Yes, a real letter car. Only 400 of these cars were built in 1963. And this one here has the cross ram, long ram engine. We see a couple of Carter AFB carburetors. This one feeds that bank. That one feeds this bank. And yes, that's a, an inexpensive form of free supercharging. These are the original air cleaners. They're metal, they're not reproductions. This is an air-conditioned car from the factory. And again, very, very rust-free. Let's go around to the side. And uh, yeah, it's got big, big drum brakes, heavy-duty suspension, which of course was part of the 300 package, the J package. And inside, and the dust, I love this dust because this is, it's just patina, it's honesty, and there's no rust on this car. We'll show you that in a second with our magnet. But inside, take a peek. Power windows, and there are, there's the console in the middle. Uh, the bucket seat that's not here is included, uh, and this car is a great project car. Tachometer in the center of the console, just under the radio, 150 mile an hour speedometer, the real thing, a 300J, and again, only 400 of these were made. And here on the roof panel, we see the proof of the pudding. Chrysler 300J, not seen on lesser Chryslers. Okay, let's break out a little magnet and just see how much, if any, <laughs> if none, <laughs> this thing sticks everywhere. This car is very clean. And inside the trunk, let's take a peek here. Spare tire in place. Let's take a look at the trunk floor. Wow, look at that. Solid. This is a beautiful car, and again, only 400 1963 300Js were built. This is one of them. Make it yours. Steve Mignani here for Asseter Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Sale Event with item number 25, a 1965 Chrysler 300L. Yes, this is the last year for the letter series of the Chrysler 300 lineup. Uh, this is one of 2,845 built in 1965, the final year for the letter series 300. Has the correct wheel covers in place. Not very sexy, but they are right. And here is the grill, the 300 grill. And again, all 300s came with these awesome Perspex glass headlamp covers. How cool is that? But only the L's got 
a specific grill ornament with an illuminated light and lens inside. Now it's missing here. The bulb is there, but this thing lights up. But again, only on the L, the letter series cars. And under the hood, we should see, yep, there it is, a 413 big block with a four barrel carburetor, aftermarket air cleaner, but it does look to be otherwise all here. That's 360 horsepower. And again, 1965, the final year for the L, the 300L, uh, they, no more dual quads, no more long rams. They were all powered by this basic engine, which is okay. 360 horse, 413, lot to like there. Okay, power brakes up front, power steering, factory air conditioning, got the seven blade clutch fan, very nice piece. Good to see that's still there big 26 inch wide radiator. Let's break out the magnet and see what we have in terms of body condition. This looks to be also the original gold paint on this car. Down low here, the magnet sticks real nice. That's awesome. No rust here. The rockers look very, very, very nice. Magnet sticks all the way down. The rear quarter panels here. Awesome. Yeah, very nice. These are the wheel skirts are also uh, removable. They're made of steel, of course. Let's take a peek inside. Some of these were built with four-speed transmissions. Okay, not here. This has the torque flight, which is okay. And again, that's a one-year only torque flight. It's a cable operated with a slip yoke on the back and guys restoring max wedges and race hemis will pay big bucks for that 1965 cable operated slip yoke torque flight. Not that you want to take it out of this car, but it is there. Okay, here we see in the center, the specific 300L. Uh, logo on the console and again only 2845 of these were built all with bucket seats here we have the uh, steering wheel everything is present and accounted for inside this one let's check those rear quarter panels make sure they're as nice as the rest yeah that's beautiful rust-free texas metal in the trunk which looks uh, massive at the drive-in you could put about 10 people in this thing get them in for free uh, but we see um Looks pretty clean in here. Uh, some aftermarket rims. I don't want to tear up the, the trunk mat, but yeah, look at that. I mean, that's just a small sample, but I would bet that it's just as nice. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. You know, in Massachusetts, this would all be, well, you'd be looking at the dirt on the ground underneath that. So this is a pretty good example. Let's see if it continues on the quarter panels here. And uh, yeah, that looks good. That's fantastic. No rust repair, that's all metal. Wheel skirts are present and accounted for. All this is nice down here. A little scuff, you know, a little road rash from normal use. And again, there is that beautiful bucket seat interior with the center console. Everything present and accounted for. Nice car, headrest, look at those headrests. How cool is that? Factory issued stuff. Uh, about four years before the federal government mandated headrests on all cars in 1969. So here it is, one of 2,845 built 1965 Chrysler 300L, the end of the line for the beautiful brute. Bid accordingly. Hey, Steve Mignani here for Astor Auctioneer's Great Texas Mopar Horde Auction Sale Event. This is item number 139, a 1963 Chrysler 300 Sport. Now, this is not the letter series car, but it's equally cool in many ways. It's a two-door. The grille is looking very good. The bumper's very decent. The anodized is good. The 300 logo is there. These are available reproduction. On this one, I can't get the hood open, but at the very least, it's a 361 two-barrel big block. More on that in a second. Okay, we get the magnet out and take a peek for rust down low. And these fenders, they look nice. A little dent right there, but again, that's good. Magnet sticks, so we know that nobody's been in here before trying to hide or cover rust. That's a good thing. Let us now go inside for a peek. Okay. Okay, this one is again a hard top, no pillar as 300s were. It has the optional bucket seat interior, which would have been standard on a letter series 300, but optional here on the 300 Sport. Uh, the gauges are all present and accounted for, as is the center console with what is either a tack or a vacuum gauge in the center, the circular item on the center console. The hole we see in that console is where the shift would have come through. And this one here, uh, the second spot of the VIN is the number two right down here. That tells us it's a 300 Sport. If it was a four, that would be a letter car 300. But again, the Sport was almost as good. Cool here. This is the original air cleaner, I'm going to bet. Uh, unsilenced, that's good. But the base plate 
is large and round. So this is probably a 383 four barrel car. Original air cleaner still present. The rocker arms are here. This is cool. Chrysler big block stuff here, are the rockers. And 1963, of course, would have had a, a separate pedestal right here on the cylinder head. So this is neat stuff. A hydraulic lifter, 383 four barrel, probably under the hood. Continuing with the quarter panel inspection, let's take a peek if there's any rust down low. And here, that's nice. And again, the magnet sticks, so nobody's been in here trying to hide anything over the years. Now, there's a little bit of crust here. Yeah, a little bit of rust going on. But again, that's to be expected in a car that's, that's this old. So, uh, yeah, pretty sweet. Let's go back to the front of the car and continue our peek down the other side. Sometimes you have to do what you can do in the yard because access is limited. This fender, equally nice. That is maybe a bubble waiting to happen. A couple years from now, it'll come through, but you can stop that sooner than later. This side, yeah, maybe a little bit of accident damage here that's been sanded, but yeah, no, no thick accumulations of putty here. That's, it's all metal. And the quarter panel here looks pretty good. Let's walk to the back for a final look on this one here. Yeah, the original tan paint, present and accounted for. The 300 specific die cast work here, present and dual exhaust. So indeed, this was a 3D3 four barrel, which was the next engine up from the 361 two barrel. So there it is, a two door Chrysler 300 Sport.